Welcome back, beautiful souls, to the Soul Collective Podcast. I'm your host, Emily Ghosh Harris, and today I'm so honored and grateful to have a returning guest on the show, Becca B, who is the founder of Soul Based Life. She is an ascension guide, a galactic astrologer, and you know, from a personal perspective, I enjoy so deeply all the guests that come on the show, but this guest, Becca, is so special to me as a personal teacher and guide and friend and just somebody that I always learn immensely from every time that we connect. So I'm so honored and so grateful for this conversation. Becca, thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, I've been really looking forward today to today. I just, I love our conversations together. I just love the energy. I love the way the guardians take it. So oh, I'm excited to see where we go today. Yeah, I always kind of feel like drinking from the water hose when, when I talk with you. There's just so, so much, um, you know, wisdom coming through. So I'm excited to see where we go. One one place that I feel guided to start is, you know, you recently shared a little bit about setting your day and setting in spiritual intentions for the day. And I'd love to explore that more and some of the practices to really help us to connect in with our spiritual teams. Mm. Oh my gosh, I love this. Because I think the way we start our day, the way we continuously align our consciousness is absolutely everything. And so I have my own personal practices that I do each day. And uh, one of my favorite practices, and I'll actually show you because I just had to light another one, is uh, I just love the very simple white votive candles. Um, you know, if someone was guided to get a little bit of a bigger candle, you know, these candles really are a sacred ritual for me in the morning because I like to tend to, to wake up quite early and process a lot of the dreams in the morning that have been coming through, really get to filter through, see um, if it was subconscious, if, if it was distractions, or if it was messages really coming through, uh, through the through the dream state. And so in that sacred quiet hour, when I get up uh, before everyone else, I like to light a candle. And that candle is really my declaration and dedication every morning to really lighting that light to say, I am merging and entering in with my spirit council. And I really see them as uh, my spirit team or my spirit council. And these are the guardians. You'll hear me use the term a lot, guardians. And I really see them as guardians. These are beings that I have a very intimate and personal relationship with. They are beings that come in multiple different forms, some of them more through telepathic connection and just consciousness and energy. But many of them do show up and allow me to have a uh, a visual connection to a form to connect with. And these beings are like, um, let me just put it like this. They're kind of like temple guardian sisters, <laughs> but they're like the very, um, very wise in the sense that having the vantage point and the viewpoint of being able to see this reality, this lifetime, this body from a much higher dimensional perspective, a much more like a higher self perspective. So when I light that candle in the morning, it's like me entering into the boardroom with my spirit council saying, I'm willing to show up today. I'm willing to dedicate my life to however I um, will be in best service to the greater mission, to working with the spirit council, to remembering what was my initial uh, declaration or dedication to even choosing to come into incarnation and letting that be the ultimate directive for my day. Because as we all know, the, our physical reality around us is designed to be distracting. It's designed to pull us into all of these other things. And my focal point, you know, through seeing the candle, through seeing, you know, many other things I place in my visual reality around me to always constantly remind me that what my path is, is my greater purpose. And that that is my joy. I don't see it as a job. I don't see it as though I'm missing out on anything. I really, truly see it as it's my passion to be this level of dedication and service every day. So the candle is is probably one of my favorite things because it really symbolizes me 
really stepping into again that council or into that boardroom to really check in for the day and get, get the get the report of where are we going what are we doing <laughs> mm, i love how intentional that is and as an ascension guide and somebody who has so deeply dedicated their lives to being of service at, you know there's a lot of photonic light that's increasing on the planet right now i'd love to hear from your perspective what is happening energetically what's happening galactically oh this is exciting um and please i'm gonna invite you to ask a lot of questions to just kind of direct where this goes because I'm going to share a little bit about what I've been receiving as I go into meditation to ask a little bit more. Um, it was coming pretty clear through the last year, even the last year and a half, that the energy vibrations were going to, it's like a dial that is continuously turning up. But there is a little bit of volatility going on with the sun. So within the volatility of the sun, it is having a little bit of a difficult time stabilizing a lot of the energy that's increasing through a lot of the alignments that are coming as we are going through what we all just kind of deem the ascension cycles. But these are really the yuga cycles, the great year, the big cosmic cycles that we naturally go on. And these are uh, like huge cosmic clocks. These are meant to happen in cycles. But we know that through the Atlantean cataclysm and through a lot of the manipulation on the planet that our cosmic clock has gotten a little... The gears have been thrown off just just a little bit in our creation because through through our incarnation or our, our inception into these physical forms or into these density matters, we're supposed to have a complete connection to our higher self, to all aspects of our light body, of our consciousness, our memories, our awareness and who we are. And I think it's pretty clear for all of us. We know that's not happening. We're really having to do the internal work to get the bits and pieces of the library records back. And so that's starting to show us the reason why for that is, again, is like the cosmic clock, if you will, or the spiral, or we could look at this as even planetary alignments or even the pole shift that has happened on the planet um, are all representations of kind of like the great body of the of the cosmic mother a little out of alignment. And so within that, um, it's a little bit kind of as a further galactic thing to understand that there has been some hijacking or manipulation around some of the energy fields around the sun. To my understanding, the black sun behind it and the portal behind it has been deactivated and shut down, but that it did create some distortions to our sun template. So it's having a little bit of a harder time receiving a lot of the light codes that are coming um, let's just say from the alignments to the Andromedan mother galaxy or the galactic core. And as those photonic rays are coming, we're getting it, but it's kind of, you see it kind of, if you, oh, there's some amazing kind of uh, news, I call them sun news channels, <laughs> where they're really watching what's happening on the surface of our sun. And you can see it's kind of like going through these, these light bursts and things like this that is going on. And so as they come, we can see that it's not like a consistent stream of energy that's coming to us. It's really almost coming as like uh, uh, sparkles off of a fireplace or something like that. And some of them are little sparks that are jumping. As they are starting to move uh, into to our Earth sphere and into our energy fields, these photonic vibrations are beginning to, regardless of, of what the sun has gone through, it's still having the amplification power to allow those photonic waves to start to reach us. And the more that we start to work with it, we as the star beings, the light beings, the indigos, um, crystalline beings, are really kind of like little plants that are grabbing these photonic rays that are like expanding in consciousness, becoming more curious to asking answers more um, uh, abilities coming online, more activated DNA, which means more flashes of memories or energies or dreams that are coming. That's us popping online. And so we're being able to be the ones, we are the primarily the ones that are doing the majority of the pillar of stabilizing the earth. 
with these codes. Now, what the guides have been showing is that as these frequencies increase and as we start to activate more of our heart song or our frequency oscillation or vibrations within us, we are going to begin to help shift the planetary as a total frequency on the planet, which is going to start to affect the Van Allen belt. Mm. And as the Van Allen belt starts to get more of these frequencies, it's going to start to dissipate and disappear. And part of the uh, amazing energy that we're seeing is we're seeing the Aurora Borealis is reaching further and further down south. And the Aurora Borealis is really showing the areas where more of these photonic light rays are making in and making more kind of like a, the, I call them the dancing dragons as the energy moves through the sky. And these are going to be the fields of the ancestors, even in a, a lot of uh, um, indigenous teachings around the world, they all consider the Aurora Borealis, the field of the ancestors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when we acknowledge the field of the ancestors, that's really us starting to connect again and having an opening to that connection. But it's very interesting because it's going to shift and change a lot of the things on the earth. And there's a lot of things on earth that are going to have to, to either leave the earth plane because it's not going to be doing the internal work to match it. And then the earth itself is going to have to adjust to these. And this is not something, you know, that I'm seeing as like a doomsday or, or a cataclysm or the revelations coming into, into an action. Are there a lot of souls that are going to be transi transitioning? They already are. Are there going to be things that are shifting and changing the fields of the earth? Well, we're seeing it. It already is. We're watching it happen. And one of the things that guides always say is that we will always be led to where we need to be when we need to be there. Hmm. And so you'll find that, you know, it's like it'll always be something you witness, but not necessarily something you're in the middle of as you get to hold the sacred space for it. And they say that as this shifts and changes, it's gonna help the earth start to shift and change back more into her natural terraform. I like it. I've come across this kind of new fun term because there's been such a, a tag of um, us moving into the new earth. And I've always felt like that didn't feel quite right because I feel like we're moving back into how earth was. Mm. <laughs> her original template, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's what I understand is going on a lot with these photonic light waves that it's about the acceleration. But if people are not choosing to do the internal work to elevate their DNA or their body, which is really just to elevate our consciousness, the more we align to Christic consciousness, so crystalline based thinking, law of one thinking, love based thinking, unity thinking, these kinds of things, these start to align us to the unity field or the fabric of the universe. Whereas if we, we are wanting to still hold on to the toxins and the residues of the past, that's what we're actually seeing on the planet right now with a lot of people having disruptions in their physical body. It's the old programming, it's the body kind of fighting against itself where it's holding some miasm and the light or, or the higher frequencies. I'm just going to keep using the word frequencies because I think we'll get that um, are elevating. And so it's like our bodies are having to go through a detox in any place that someone isn't having quite maybe the, the safe space or maybe the tools to detox some of the deep seated, maybe ancestral karma or debt or emotions, then those energies will start to clash. And we do see these as soreness, illness, um, different kind of miasms within the body. That is the very unfortunate thing. Hmm. And that's kind of what you're referring to as perhaps maybe that destabilizing energy. You know, one of the visualizations that, that they have shared, and I, I love this, they kind of only shared it with me once and I'm like, I like it, it works, <laughs> is they they said, imagine a house plant and a house plant that's been all sheltered in the house. And then maybe, and then you're like, oh, well, plants love outdoors. 
And so imagine you take that plant who's been sheltered in a house all of this time and you take it and you put it in the full sun. You, we all know that, oh my gosh, like that would literally kill the plant. Yeah. And they're saying we are like those plants. That's where our consciousness that this is why you are so important, my dear. And others like you are sharing these messages because you are giving platforms for so much more of the frequencies and the voices to be heard. Because as this comes, it's making curiosity blossom. Hmm. And I like to think of curiosity as one of the vibrations of source. The source, I without a doubt, source is a very curious, <laughs> curious energy. I feel <laughs> so as well. Yeah, you know, Becca, you and I have chatted a bunch about supporting star seeds. And I have a bunch of questions for you around that. But one of the questions that I want to start with is really around our mission at this time. And, you know, you've shared about this in a different, unique way than I've heard others share. I'd love if you could share some of, you know, the, the unique missions that you're most seeing at this time. Absolutely. You know, and this is, this is really a great question because we all definitely do have a very unique mission. And there are some that are here to really get the voice, the throat chakra, the manifestation center out there to really be a pillar of light and a voice for others. Um, you know, one of the things that is at the core of my mission and, and a lot of individuals who resonate with what I talk about, this will also be part of their mission, is really helping to be the guides for many of the soul's uh, and the energies upon the earth in order to help them begin to align to the correct frequencies so that whether it's um, ascension through the body or ascension through the bardo chambers, it doesn't matter. What we're doing is we're really finding all of the soul, the soul fragments, um, those that have uh, been, been, we'll just say the word lost or um, looking, seeking. You know, being the pillars of light that are really being those way showers and those guides, but not just here on earth, but through the dimensional planes of consciousness, that it's one thing to start to come to awareness here on earth. But one of the things that I think is so important that I think many star seeds and missions are about is about teaching the discernment and learning how to trust one's own internal compass mm -hmm. so that no matter where we travel or what we do, we don't find ourselves confused or manipulated by any of these uh, other transmissions. We'll just say that way as we continuously align our consciousness to our higher self, to our galactic soul families, universal tree of light, and this like, and this and basically, and I feel that with in on a core level, the primary mission of most star seeds is to uh, allow their vibration to be a living example for others to have that permission, if you will, to come back into self and trust self and let all of that blossom from there. Hmm. That's beautiful. And I, I guess, you know, in exploring this, you know, it's such a, a, a pivotal time. And, you know, I feel as though there's so many that are really wanting to step forth and deepen into their soul mission and purpose, and yet maybe feel as though, you know, they're overwhelmed as to how to get started or, you know, it's like almost seeing a bridge, right? And it's not fully formed yet, but you know that that's the direction that you're headed. So what advice would you have to really deepen into that? I feel again that our higher selves, our soul teams, our spirit teams are so present and so active with us. I think one of the key things is is to have everyone remember that it doesn't matter <laughs> how much we know or where we're at. There, This isn't a competition as to where we are on this bridge, if so to speak, you know, and that within that, just the fact that one would be even attuned or interested in a conversation like this is 
proof positive enough that your heart is aligned to this Christic path. Mm -hmm. And go Can ahead. You explain a Christic path for those that are maybe not familiar. Absolutely. So when I say Christic path, we really are referring to a vibrational consciousness family, if you will, that exists within uh, 12th dimensional spectrum. But, but basically what we're referring to is non-duality, non-polarity, that this would be attuning to the Trinity wave, that this would be attuning to the eternal flame, and that Christic consciousness would be alignments to compassion, law of one teachings, unconditional love, non-judgment, forgiveness, uh, empathy, and also within all of these energies, we know that, oh, yes, all of these are beautiful. There are also a sense of holding Christic energy is about holding the power of the light that does not have to be validated by anything outside of self, because you know, without a doubt, your alignment to that Christic light is everything. And the Christic light really is, it's not just a fictional thing. <laughs> it's actually a bandwidth of consciousness within a um, higher band of, of, of creation, a higher dimensional frequency of creation. It's a plasma light field of consciousness. So the beings in the consciousness there are really what we would think of as um, really evolved evolved massive fields of consciousness that are attuned to what is referred to as the Christ star. And this would be like a radiant, a radiant sun, a radiant light, a radiant origin point that has a deep connection to the Andromedan, the Andromedan mother galaxy. And it really uh, ties within us when we start to connect to it. We can really also start to take in the softer tones of it, of the Aurora suns and the Aurora light bands, which hold the mother arc frequencies. And so the mother arc is really a very nurturing, a beautiful um, aqualine vibrational frequency that is that nurturing energy that just kind of welcomes us back into the heart of source. And so when I talk about the Christ path, the Christ path is the part of us that has that sense of purpose, of mission, of of wanting to be in service to others, of wanting to really bring divine law and divine order back in. And when we align to that, that would be a really neat way to just say, hey, I feel that alignment to the Christ mission. Mm, beautiful. And I feel it's a vibration when you're speaking of that. I can connect and feel that vibration mm -hmm. and that energy. And I feel there is probably, you know, a remembrance, a cellular remembrance, even if, you know, we're not getting every single word that's coming through. It's more of the energy, um, you know, and the frequency. And something that, that we've talked about before is about, you know, reincarnation cycles and really remembering or learning from the past, what do you feel is important for us to remember and to perhaps get differently this time around? That That's amazing. And I'll tie that in to the last question we didn't get to finish answering about, you know, a lot of the, the starseeds feeling a little frustrated with what, what path to go on. Because that ties perfectly and um, reincarnation was not the original design of this universal template. Incarnations definitely are part of the divine template, which means that you could incarnate in. But of course, remember, we would have had all of our knowing and remembrances of our connection or that light strand of energy. That's why it's we when we talk about kundalini and the sacred serpent energy that that is within us, it really is like um, an oscillating uh, wave of energy. And energy is consciousness. Consciousness is energy. So it's an oscillating wave. We you can see my arm doesn't do the snake very well, but it could be like a snake, right? <laughs> that would be within us, but it would be um, kind of like a standing wave that would have its complete connection back to the eternal source in here. So it's 
It's the sacred serpent, if you will, of that divine connection. So incarnating in, we would have been able to be in a body, have the experience of being in this creation, but still have the ultimate connection within of knowing our connection to the divine template fields. There would be no disconnect. We are in an entirely different reality. We are in an entire different reality. Think about, again, the Van Allen belts. These are the frequency fence that has literally put a chop over here between our even... We weren't even supposed to be disconnected from our subconscious body. Our subconscious body is even a, a created template within us that is kind of holding a separate other packet of energy because of some of these... Um, splices in our light body fields. And so now when we think about reincarnation, one of the best things, and you asked the question of like, what would help us to do it differently? Honestly, one of the most beautiful techniques, and this is something that the uh, Arcturians were actually really sharing, is to recognize that whatever we have an emotional attachment to, it creates kind of like a quantum entanglement with that point in time. And so when we have, say, a lifetime experience and maybe we feel guilty about something or angry about something or like a victim to something, those, especially the lower vibrational frequencies, they're kind of like a sticky miasm in our field and they create kind of a binding in our soul plasma field and so they kind of keep us tethered to these other timelines so we start to create kind of like this sticky web to all these other past lives and what they were saying is that when we can start to really be within the stillness of our energy start to grab the energy the way that we can do it differently is by starting to recognize that everything that has that has happened and is happening in this timeline experience is a holographic reflection of something that's in our template or field and if we can not take anything personal, I know that's a big one, <laughs> then we can begin to start to be the curious observer that when something happens, we can notice how our body gets affected or triggered. Mm -hmm. Become curious about that, start to go like, hmm, that is very interesting. It's interesting that they said that and my body felt this. It's interesting. They did that to me. They cut me off in traffic and I felt angry or I felt upset or I felt invisible like nobody sees me and everybody takes advantage of me. And then when we catch that, we grab it and we are being that neutral, compassionate observer that is being curious about what's moving through the records, our Akashic library of our template or a body. And then we can ask the guides or we can go into a space where we can ask, isn't that entry? Show me the origin point of where that came from. Mm -hmm. So that we can begin to maybe see, did it come in our earlier childhood? Did it come from another lifetime experience? And that when we start to grab onto that origin point, what we start to do is we take our new Christic consciousness that starts to say, well, it makes sense that that individual felt that, or it makes sense that as a child, I felt that, but I am not that child anymore. And we start to get to see where maybe our child mind or past life experiences embedded those energies so that we can then do the, the clearing work. It's a little bit of process. I won't go through all of it with you here. <laughs> but when we go through the clearing of it so that we neutralize the energy, we're no matter what, we are taking these past timeline aspects into a state of awareness of themselves as pure, eternal energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that we are not the past and that passes over. And the way the Arcturian showed it is that when we take these energies, we basically neutralize them and it dissipates the energy right out of our field. Mm -hmm. And so the, all the wisdom of those lifetimes can be stored within our Akash libraries, but they don't have charge in our 
plasma body anymore to keep bringing a reoccurrence of those holographic realities into our experience. So that's one of the key ways we can do it different because we start to clean our lens and our perception in this reality so that we can actually have a much more um, calm and centered body consciousness and way of thinking so that we can really remember what's the bigger picture why am i really here and then we start to little bit little bit by little bit unplug from all these occurring dreams around us yes. and start to live in our own dream yes what you're sharing is so powerful and i want to make sure like the transition is there so if somebody is listening and they're you know, really having a feeling of, you know, whatever the limiting belief is, you know, I'm not worthy or I, it's not safe for me to speak my truth or I'm depressed or whatever that is, you know, how do we begin, how do we go from that reality to beginning to separate from that? Mm. Yeah, it is. Um, it is definitely an emotional path. Sometimes in the very beginning, it definitely brings a lot of emotions or tears because we've been bottling up a lot. And part of it is about not inhibiting whatever is the stored messages in our Akashic library. Mm -hmm. And so our body, our DNA, and the information in our mitochondria and how we are perceiving our reality, a lot of it is the stored memories of our ancestors. And it does have the stored memories of past life experiences. So there's a lot of trauma and wounds and unheard voices within. And we get to imagine that we are that compassionate listener that gets to hear the message. That if the message really is sitting there and it has to say things that might seem like out there, like, you know, everybody hates me. Nobody loves me. It feels like I'm invisible. It feels like the rest of the world has something important and I don't matter. And I don't even belong here. And all of these things, we want to not make any of that wrong. Let it all speak out of the body in a safe space mm -hmm. in order for it to be witnessed where we slowly get to the place where we say, isn't it interesting? And here's, what's really interesting is that it makes sense as a child or at different times in our life that we had expectations of others to act a certain way for us in order for us to feel validated. Mm. But that is not the path of a starseed. <laughs> we are here to come and step in our pillar of light that starts to recognize that we are going to take responsibility, that it doesn't matter if what they did for all intents and purposes, you could argue it and the whole auditorium would agree with you. Yep, they were so mean to you and terrible. It doesn't matter. Our job is to recognize that even in that moment, what was it with, that we were needing them to say, do, or be for us in order for us to feel validated, heard, loved, recognized? Mm. And when we start to go, wow, I've been projecting my responsibilities on other people. Mm -hmm. We start to now take our responsibility back. We give them their energy back. And we, we then start to step into this new template of that it's my responsibility to love who I am. It's my responsibility to know who I am. It's my responsibility to validate myself. It's my responsibility to love my body, recognize my own beauty, see who I am, develop my own connection. And that any way I've projected that onto another or made another responsible for who I am here to be within myself, I am done with that now. Higher self, pull all of that from me now. I am ready to recognize that I am part of the divine Christic family and I am ready to stand here as a pillar of light and be who I came here to be. I love that. It's so awesome because you just you it's basically taking something that at first we feel like such a victim and then we, by the end of it we get to turn it around and be like yeah I did come here for something and even though I may not know the whole picture I know that I am beautiful that I am lovable that I am worthy and you go through the whole list you be the energy that you've been seeking from others 
for yourself. And that's where we start to really embrace again. And what I think I've mentioned this for on with you before, um, but the gate 25 mm. in the jinkies or, or in, in human design um, to me is the epitome of this. It is that ability to be all the love that we seek. If we actually recognize that it's right within ourself, we would stop projecting or playing the victim in this reality. I it's I and mean, I've said this a few times that I'm like, if we all could be that, just fully realize within self for three seconds, if the whole planet could be it for just like three seconds, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, the world would change. Yeah, it's so true. And I'm so I'm reminded of my own personal self love journey as you're speaking. It's like I remember a time when looking in the mirror and saying, I love you was so challenging. It would, you know, break down in, in tears. And it's that journey of really learning. It's not something that, you know, happens overnight, but it's something that step by step, little by little, with that intention, you like you said, you're able to look at the pieces with neutrality, look at them with compassion and love and non judgment. And I feel like that is such an empowering journey to be able to help, you know, really understand who we are and why we're here. Yeah. And I love that you say that because it's like, you know, we've all been the harshest critic to ourselves. Mm. all in the how much we've judged ourselves, and then we put that projection of our self-judgment onto others as if they are judging us in that way and you know this is just one of the manipulation techniques that uh really gets used against us a lot and so i wanted to even address a little bit a lot about there are a lot of individuals on the planet that are on the path, they are sitting here going like, what am I, what am I supposed to do? I feel as though I know I'm starting to know, or I'm curious to know, but I feel lost. I feel like, what is my purpose? What am I supposed to do? How, how do I know <laughs> what is my purpose? And then many times feeling challenged by the reality or, you know, whether it's a job, family, circumstances, and all of these things. And I want to just put a heartfelt, you know, connection out there in, into saying that, unfortunately, because of the light that you have come to share, it has created an additional targeting on a lot of the star seeds and the indigos and the crystalline beings out there because our ability to awaken this light within us has such a, a tremendous impact on the evolutionary cycle of where the human species can evolve that we do want to also start to become aware of what we might think are as think of as some of the darker or less desirable topics <laughs> upon the planet. And that is the, uh, the uh, manipulation that does come from certain beings, interdimensional beings or extraterrestrial beings that have realized that the human species, especially the angelic human species here, is an incredibly powerful energy source. <laughs> And not only that, there is a sense of not wanting the angelic human race line to evolve. There are certain race lines out there that recognize our potential to be quite an advanced uh, species, mm -hmm. an advanced guardian species. And Becca, and I'm just going to ask you a question here. So if somebody is listening and they're like, okay, angelic, indigo, rainbow, crystalline, you know, how do I identify whether that is if you're speaking about me? Okay. Um, generally, someone who is is indigo, crystalline, rainbow being, starseed being, there is a sense that you will feel as though you have not fit into the systems of this earth since the moment that you landed here. And primarily what it is, is that you have come in with a future human upgraded template. And primarily, it means that you would be more sensitive or empathic, uh, maybe have different gifts and capabilities. Maybe it is, it's as simple as even sometimes not being able to adjust to the mathematics system or reading books like other people. Maybe it's the need to read books from the back <laughs> to the front 
or feeling like if you look at numbers, they get a little bit jumbled and things like this because you don't see things in the same linear way as has been the more materialistic way of the past. And so in a lot of this, um, a lot of these individuals will feel like the black sheep or feel different. But primarily what it is, is that your nervous system is a little bit different. It's, it's definitely hardwired different. And what it means is that just more of your template or angelic template. So when I say angelic, um, Angels, really, if you look at etymology, angels would be beings within creation that have the ability to move through the light bands or the angles. Mm. Not to get too complicated. <laughs> angels take on any, any, all forms. Angels are not just humanoid looking beings with wings. They, they have many different forms. And basically, um, angelic is a particular frequency or bandwidth and generally associated to the sixth dimension. Okay. And so it is just an, a, a being that has the ability to move interdimensionally as a messenger. Hmm. A lot of times we call them guides, but guess what most, most star seeds are? You're messengers. <laughs> You're here to bring a message. So um, that's maybe, does that help a little bit as a short answer? Yes, super helpful. And I didn't mean to interrupt because you were sharing kind of some of the maybe forces to be mindful of. Yes. And so there are different um, race lines out there that kind of have had a, a domination and they recognize that should we really evolve, we have the potential to evolve, not only consciously, but, you know, from their perspective, because they're very self-serving, that we would have the ability to evolve to godlike statuses. What that really means is that we would just start to have our awarenesses again of how to move energy, telepathy, um, teleportation, bilocation, working with our energy systems and our chakras and really being coming more and more one with the universal divine template. That's all that means, you know, and, you know, for all intents, they have access to a lot of these sacred mechanics and they don't want to share. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so the, there has been some manipulation in the effect of trying to kind of thwart or um, uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, what's the term that I'm using? But, you know, when somebody is, you know, flattening a tire for someone in a car race or, you know, getting in there and doing these little things to keep them from making it on the race. And so that's a lot of what's happened. And a lot of this came through, I think, what a lot of us remember in our, our galactic memories in our Akash library is a time during some of the uh, later Atlantean times where some of the Syrian Anunnaki races started to, to come in and start to manipulate and work with the DNA template within the human body in order to plug some of their genetics in to our template in order to um, kind of shift and change our template a little bit. So part of this is to understand that there is not from a lot of the beings that we would think of as the ones that have been running the show here until we get until we get our stuff in alignment and remember who we are. They've been taking advantage of our forgetfulness. And these beings that have been kind of running the show here, they don't want us to remember because they basically are utilizing this place as a, a natural resource there. There's even larger kind of um, ways that it's being used, but primarily let's just look at it as energy. And so within that, this template isn't set up for us to thrive. We weren't born into families many times that had all of the tools available to us to help us understand mm -hmm. what we were thinking or feeling and all of these things. And there are spirits, there are entity attachments, there are lower astral beings that do get in and sometimes influence and thwart our abilities. And it can feel many times like we're taking a step forward and getting kicked two steps back in the very beginning. But when we just start to learn what is the playing field, what is going on here? It's like pulling the veils aside so we don't have to be confused anymore. And we can start to actually remember that pillar of light that gives you the remembrance that you hold the ultimate power within you through the template of your voice mm. to say, no, 
I do not consent and I will not be sharing my energy field or my sacred space with anything or anyone. No thing and no one has the right to control me or own me. I am a soul sovereign being. And as you start to grab into that, it takes a little bit of time to begin to detox all of this energy out of our field. And one of the things I, I wanted to just one last thing on this point is that when we are starting to elevate our vibrations of our consciousness, a lot of the things that have been hosting on us and taking our energy get a little upset. They're like, quit shaking the boat. You're, you know what? <laughs> You're my plug in for my energy and my fuel. Stop it. This could be anything from enti entity attachments. Um, this could be anything from astral beings that have been bound through ancestral lineage lines. A lot of times this is our family tree. Ancestors that are still hanging around and living their life through future generations. And we start to say to them, absolutely not. And at first they'll try to stop us because they don't want the discomfort of having to either move on or to find some other source. But when we stay tenacious to it and we say absolutely not, it actually changes very quickly. And it's like we become an environment they don't resonate with her. And that eventually stops. And we don't have to deal with that influence anymore the same way that we did before. So there, it, it's a short period of time, but it passes. I promise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I feel like one of the biggest lessons is just to learn how powerful we each are and, you know, our own sovereignty, like really embracing that fully. You know, I'm going to put voice to the question that I feel like maybe some are asking, you know, it's like, oh, there's a lot of maybe, um, why, why would, you know, beings want to be manipulative or, or, or dark, or why would this be, you know, transpiring and taking place? That is the true question of a Christic starseed. <laughs> it, is, it is our age-old question for sure, because here's the thing. We don't resonate that way. Our, our, our consciousness can't comprehend it. We don't understand like why someone would want to hurt another person or why would somebody want to take advantage of another person or why would somebody do that? And so when we're looking at these kinds of energies, we're really looking at beings that are coming from other universal systems or other dimensional realities. And this is really out there for a lot of us where it's going like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I believe in this stuff, but I'm going to invite you to just to, just for fun, Google Vedic cosmology and just look at all of the lokas. And we're going to, this is, this is where we, I think in 2024 and 2025 are going to have our massive awakening is that we are not necessarily going to have a bunch of extraterrestrials from other places coming. We're going to learn who's living and existing with us right here where we are. Mm. And through these dimensional planes, let's just play with the fairies for fun, right? You know, the, the fairies are something that I think are really quite embedded in our consciousness. And there's a lot of people that might be like, oh, well, they're just this mythical or fictional, or are they? <laughs> and when we think of these, we know that the fairies live within a very thin veil, in another dimension. And if you were to pass into their reality, their reality actually functions in a completely other, uh, another size, another, another uh, whole kind of base of physics even. And so there are realms and realities, for instance, the crystalline um, or crystals, if you get a crystal and you really connect to it and you ask to really kind of move into its dimensional level of where its consciousness is existing, you will actually enter into a space that for might seem molecular on this reality, but when you step into it, it is a vast, it's like sh size and shape changes based on dimensions. And that's why when we think of like, say the demigods and the Olympians and these things like this, these were beings like from Hyperborea and these types of things. And in some of the God worlds, as you go in, the templates get bigger. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Don't ask me how it happens, <laughs> but it's so wild. So our body would be different. And so that's why templates are completely different. <laughs> and the, the aura femme, even if you look at how their template is, 18 feet, 20 feet, and you're just sitting there, what? It's just a different dimensional plane. So there are many, 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 many parallel realities in universal systems. And many of them are based in Christic principles eternal living light there are a few that are not yeah and they are going to be the ones that really have uh they're they're very self-serving they're lack empathy because they're just not wired that way yeah and there is some of yeah some of them are very phantom um some of them do have form some of them do seem a little bit insectoid and things like this but there are other realms and realities where there are beings that um, just they don't operate from the same organic template. And some of these realities have infected this reality. And this is where we start to get those that we would think as psychopathic or these lacking empathy, the ability to to really harm others and not even feel it. Uh, are going to be the visual way that we see how it has infected and influenced this reality. So I would say that when we witness all of this around, that we want to make sure that we're not crumpling into being the victim or that we're letting our wheels spin on why, 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 because the guides have said we will never understand the why because our consciousness isn't wired to understand theirs. Mm -hmm. It's just two other realities. And so we'll never understand why other than that they have entered into this reality. We are toxic to them when we run the Christic light. So the more we just start to be the pillar of light, the more we make an environment they find hostile to their template. Hmm. But that's why they have spent so much time promoting and provoking fear, 